Welcome to AATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. So, yes. shall we start? Sixty-year-old female patient uh, came to our emergency with a complaint of right-sided lower abdominal pain since two days. Initial 10-second assessment, patient was conscious and oriented. Uh, coming to uh, primary survey, on airway appears uh, patent, there is no any secretions. Coming to breathing part, air entered bilateral equal, respiratory rate was 18 breath per minute and saturation is 97% on room air. Circulation, BP was 110 bar 60 and heart rate is uh, 102 per minute. CRT is less than 2 seconds and all peripheral pulsation are felt equal. Coming to disability, GCS was 15 bar 15, uh, people's 2.5 mm equally reacted to light. And exposure part, temperature was uh, 100 degree Fahrenheit. So that time we put a IV cannula and we given injection paracetamol, 1 gram IV stat was given. And GRBS was 260 milligram deciliter. Uh, coming to uh, adjoint to... What is the difference between peripheral IV line and central line? Uh, peripheral IV line... Where all you can use peripheral line? Where all you can use central line? Is there any advantage of uh, central line or peripheral line in emergency room? In emergency room, uh, initially we will put on peripheral lines. If the patient requires multiple fluid uh, and IV fluids or in dose, in, uh, more high dose, we can go on with central line and multiple fluids what is your opinion is peripheral line is superior to sorry if is central line is superior to peripheral line in emergency room or not that is a question peripheral line is better what is your opinion <coughs> so the smaller the gauge how much the di diameter? Faster the flow. Okay. Shorter the length, faster the flow. So, if you want to give fluid resuscitation in emergency room, peripheral line is more than sufficient to treat the patient. But like you told you, if you want to give multiple fluids, drugs, anotropes, lot of monitoring is required, then central line may be useful. Okay. So, in emergency room, we no need to wait for a central mm. line to treat the patient. We put two IV lines and you can start uh, fluids in multiple lines. It is as good or better than the central line. Uh, adjunct to primary survey, uh, we taken a uh, VBG. Uh, VBG uh, showing pH is 7.36, uh, bicarbonate is 19 and PCO2 is 37. And VBG other creatinine is 3.8 and lactate was 2 with potassium 4.3 and sodium is uh, 127 and we taken a CBC CRP point of care that show in total count is 14,000 and CRP is 50. Uh, when coming to secondary survey, a uh, 60 year old female patient, uh, known case of diabetic on demipride plus metformin, uh, presented to our emergency with complaint of right sided abdominal pain which was radiating to low into growing. And patient also complained of fever, associated with chills and multiple episodes of vomiting. Uh, patient also complained of dysuria and increased frequency of urination. Initially, patient was taken, because of this complaint, taken to an outside hospital. They had done a US abdomen and pelvis, was taken, reported as right renal calculus with uh, mild HUN, hydronephrosis. Then for further evaluation, they taken a CCT abdomen, which shows right mild HUN. Most of the time, when, you, when there is a urinary tract infection or urinary, urinary obstruction due to stone. When you do ultrasound, you can see hydronephrosis, hydronephrosis Hydro. with ureter nef uh, Hydro nephrosis. Hydro ureter nephrosis. Okay. So, in urinary tract infection, simple urinary tract, it's not simple, complicated urinary tract infection, can you get <coughs> hydronephrosis? Is it only seen in obstructive lesions like uh, stones? And prostatum in males with prostatum yeah, I am asking urinary tract infection without prostatum without actual obstruction. Passage yes. of stones. Stone oh. is uh, obstruction. Without obstruction in a uh, ureter infection, can you get hydronephrosis mm. or not? Vesicular reflex. That, that is a children. children. That is possible. Otherwise, you get a lot of pyelonephritis mm. here. And that you get a lot of ureteral infections. Can you get hydronephrosis? Mm. Edema of edema mm. is uh, more than sufficient to produce a obstruction in the ureter and can produce hydronephrosis. Okay. So most of the time we think that only stone or structure or malignancy can produce hydronephrosis. 
UTA itself can produce hydronephrosis. Okay. Mm, for further evaluation, they had done a CCT abdomen which showed right mild HUN uh, with fat stranding. Uh, what is the indication of CT abdomen in uh, in a case of UTI like this? Uh, Why do you want to take a CT? In this case, they evaluated because of an USG that doesn't get a clear idea what is causing the HUN. Okay. So, if you want to see a stone, stone. sometimes Size. CT will be better than uh, USG. Yes. Okay, then. Then they suspected also any pyelonephritis. So, so you are okay. not showing pyelonephritis. They okay. have taken so you may have to give contrast and contrast. Okay. So, initially the creatinine was 0.8 uh, when the patient was admitted there. Then they taken the CCT abdomen uh, which showing right mild HUN with fat stranding suggestive of right pyelonephritis uh, and likely to pass out calculus. After CCT abdomen, patient RFT was deranged from baseline 0 0.8 to becomes 3.8. Then patient also so come may be contrast in induced uh, acute infection. infection also. Then patient also complained of history of decreased urine output since two days. For further management, patient came to our hospital. Okay. So it can be uh, because of the uh, uh, infection, infection or it can be due to the contrast. contrast. Both are possible. Uh, then uh, further evaluation in our hospital. Uh, CRP, uh, CRP is uh, 50 and total count is 15,000. We uh, sent a routine investigation that creatine was uh, 3.8 and urea was 110.7. So baseline was 0.8. After that, it becomes 3.8 and urea was 110.7. So considering 20 is to 1 ratio, uh, most probably it is a pre-renal uh, thing is there. Then urea routine showing pus numerous pus cells. Uh, with the uh, epithelial cells and cast also present, so suggestive of uh, pyelonephritis also there. Uh, then we started on symptomatic. So here lactate was high, there was acidosis. Okay. Acidosis was not there, sir. Lactate. Initially, uh, acidosis was not 7. there. 7.35. Lactate was 2, sir, initially. Two. Later, patient goes into acidosis. Okay. Uh, but your note what was initially uh, low, then it was maintaining, so we don't do any dialysis for okay. that. Uh, then uh, urine routine showing pus cells and uh, cast cell is there. We started on uh, antibiotic like injection to present uh, taxobacterium. Uh, now, how do you tackle this uh, renal failure? Tell me first that antibiotic has to be started mm -hmm. without like. Uh, uh, we will uh, for this contrast induced we can two two regimen is there we can give IV fluids or sodium bicarbonate. Okay. IV fluids initially we use on isotonic or normal saline. Uh, we can give that is three ml per kg for one hour uh, pre procedure, then one point five ml per kg per hour during and four to six hour post procedure. And that is one regimen and we can use sodium bicarbonate also uh, that is 154 milli equivalent sodium bicarbonate mixed in d5 water then 3 ml per kg for one hour uh, pre procedure then uh, 1.5 ml per kg uh, post procedure or during and post procedure for four to six hours so this when when you are anticipating a problem mm -hmm. like you have a patient who is having pyelonephritis when you are taking ct it is better to give fluids and fluids. Take CT that scan. in patients like uh, hypovolemic or uvolemic patients, we can give fluids uh, with a GFR is more than 30 to 50. Uh, if less than 30, avoid uh, CT, uh, better to avoid CT. Okay. Uh, then if patient in uh, hypervolemic, uh, uh, avoid the uh, fluid treatment. The problem is in acute phase of all this infection, we don't gain anything from CT scan. That is, a, we try to avoid when there is an acute infection if if possible we should avoid uh, contrast induced ct scan we can go with ultrasound and make a diagnosis uh, then mri is it useful mri where all mri can be useful in abdomen vascular where all mri can be useful why mri is not a good investigation in abdomen but there are some situations you can even go for mri what is the basic of MRI? If we are looking for a moving object, then MRI is not a good choice. Suppose you are in this time, it is continuously moving. MRI is not a good choice. But uh, see, uh, kidney, 
spleen liver mri can be used if required but normally we don't use anything we go for ct only okay uh then uh, we symptomatically treated the patient we uh, started now uh, antibiotic you wanted to start Antibiotic. antibiotic we start around piperacillin daxobactin in view of uh, one is contrast induced aka is there then see infection induced means ut induced then pyrrole and sepsis is there so we started on piperacillin uh, um, daxobactin how you select this antibiotic we will select with uh, gram positive and gram negative coverage more commonly uh, gram negative organism causes the infection uh, so for that what other antibiotics can be used in urinary tract infection uh most commonly but we start on fluoroquinolones mm-hmm. uh then we can start on second generation third generation cephalosporins second generation third generation cephalosporins okay uh if patient fourth generation cephalosporins is it okay is it okay can you give uh, the fourth generation cephalosporin or not it also can be used that is also good for gram pos gram negative coverage third generation we routinely use because they are very, very cheap okay uh then patient in uh, sepsis septic uh, shock we better to use on carbapenems uh, why it is like that is it like that anywhere it is given any guideline is there for a patient who is having septic shock should we use carbapenem there is no guideline mm-hmm. such a guideline is not there if you are having uh, like a patient with urinary tract infection with e coli and he has developed a septic shock and if he is sensitive for your quinolones uh, or septreaction that may be sufficient okay no need to go for meropenem okay mm. that meropenem all these things depends on the culture report suppose you have a previous culture report like a patient who is having repeated urinary tract infection previous culture report shows some organism which is resistant to most of the antibiotic meropenem is sensitive then you can try that Start on. okay otherwise uh, it is not uh, recommended that you initially itself you start uh, meropenem okay piperacillin daxobactam is okay now uh, piperacillin daxobactam what is the dose you selected uh start dose we can give uh, 4.5 now you, here you have to see the creatinine clearance. clearance what is the creatinine clearance here how do you calculate creatinine clearance huh what do you calculate ஒருவேளை <laughs> 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 second dose onwards you can try to reduce the dose okay problem is when you are giving higher doses in a renal failure there will be complication because of the over accumulation of the drug but there are some other concept that uh, in patients who is having infection induced renal failure you can even st- still give the same dose like you are giving present dose of actum 4.75 g tid so if you are thinking the renal failure is due to uh infection then you can continue the same dose okay but uh, on the other side if you are having a contrast induced nephropathy and the renal failure is not completely due to infection mm. then you can con- uh, reduce the dose mm. whatever it is most of the doctors try to reduce the do- dose according to creatinine clearance and give okay especially when you are using cu- uh, quinolones so not quinolones meropenem all these drugs what is the uh, risk of ing- giving uh, meropenem in a renal failure in full dose to like in course eh huh? what is the side of they are having highly seizure potential activity okay so it is better to control the dose and reduce the dose according to the creatinine clearance okay what is this creatinine clearance what is the concept of creatinine clearance if you see the drug chart no mm-hmm. most of the drugs will have only three levels less than 75 less than 50 less than 25 20 or 25 okay if the creatinine is less than 2 not less than 2 more than 2 50% of the your kidney is not working then the creatinine clearance you can easily ca- 
tell it can be 50 or less okay if it is 4 it is less than 25 so you can see that values and you can adjust the dose if you if you cannot calculate but nowadays these calculators are available in most of the smartphones you should calculate and see okay otherwise 2 and 4 is enough 2 is less than 50 4 is less than 25 most of the patients <coughs> in an average adult it is enough uh, then we start to symptomatic management uh, mm. uh, later the crp and total count can you give fluids in this patient uh, fluids you can give sir how do you give so this patient is admitted with high creatinine and high urea you are suspecting either prerenal failure due to sepsis or contrast induced mm -hmm. nephropathy with anuria okay so you are you might have done an ultrasound lactate all these things and you want to give fluids and you may be worried about the uh, fluid or fluid. Load pulmonary edema how do you give fluid resuscitation in this patient uh, we can the normal pr practical problems we are going to face in this patient, uh, we can start on low maintenance dose low, like 75 ml per hour fluid we can start. Then we check on what the urine give? output. What is fluid challenge in this patient? What do you give fluid challenge? Huh? Huh? No, we don't know the output. Urna ur urinary, see renal failure can be due to pre-renal pre cause of hypovolemia or it can be due to your drug both are possible so how do you give fluid challenge in this patient 30 ml per kg per start we can start on then we put on a catheter we can monitor the output is coming at some same time you can also auscultate the chest in the okay. so you also. give fluids around 500 ml start you give you see the patient response if the patient going to permanent edema stop it okay that's all so fluid challenge has to be given in all these type of patients most of the patients, suppose it is a pre-renal failure, after giving fluids, you can see the urine output. Mm. If urine output is coming, then it's a good sign. Mm. You can give more fluids. If urine output is not there, then you have to be very careful. Okay. What happened to the patient afterwards? After uh, two to three days, patient symptomatically better. Um, N-acetyl cysteine, any role is there after post-contrast renal failure? Any role is there? And still cysteine can be tried, it, sometimes it may be helpful, it is not clearly indicated, mm -hmm. but uh, post contrast uh, renal failure it may be helpful. We have a material called as VCPAC, mm -hmm. so that also can be tried in, in a case like this, but we will not be knowing which patient is going to develop. So all these patients we cannot use it, okay. Mm -hmm. But if you want a second CT or something like that, we can try this. Okay. Anything else you want to tell? Uh, then uh, basically acute kidney injury you can uh, classification is kidigo classification. Okay. Uh, one is stage one that is increased risk from creatine more than uh, one point uh, five. Uh, then urine output is less than zero point five zero point five ml per kg um, with four six hours. Stage two is increased creatine which is more than three times to two two point nine times. Decrease the urine output 0.5 ml per kg per hour for 12 hours. Then stage 3 is increase the creatine more than 3 times. Then decrease the urine output 0.3 ml per kg per hour for more than 24 hours. Kidigo yeah. Kidigo Okay. Anything else? Nothing. Okay. Thank you.